What's up NZers and welcome to the very first episode of your New Zealand family podcast. Oh, it's exciting. It's very exciting and very uh, scary. We've taken the leap guys. <laughs> it's the first time that we're uh, ever trying some very long format video. So yeah, <laughs> I'm going to have a good chat. There's yeah. lots to talk about. I love lots, chatting. Yeah, lots of uh, big episodes to come. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so today we are, well, I mean, first of all, yeah, we've got a lot of episodes to come. We've got a lot of stories, like personal stories from our lives. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, probably a lot of thoughts to share about traveling, especially to America. Yeah, and particularly after we get back. Yes. It'd be cool to like debrief. Yeah. And chat about, you know, our experience, stuff that we can't really put in our vlogs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I guess this is a time where we just sort of break everything down and and just have a good yarn. I finally pinned you down to yeah. <laughs> chat to. Nadine's the talker. Yeah. I'm not. But uh, I'm going to do my best because, you know. I'll do my best to hold back and you'll do your best to actually engage <laughs> yeah. in conversation. And we'll probably meet somewhere in the middle. Hopefully. That's the hope. <laughs> yeah. So uh, today the topic, I suppose, even though it's not uh, particularly a positive one, um, you know, it is definitely a relatable one. Uh, yeah. There's probably many people who are watching this right now that have one or more uh, health issues or ailments and yeah, it's quite a common thing these days and I thought that uh, we would probably go into a bit about me uh, I guess and what I've been through. Because it's sort of relevant right now um, and people have noticed Yeah. Uh, there's been a few changes, a few have picked it up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like doing less food boxes yes so that, that's a big reason yeah why we haven't done many boxes and your weight loss yeah things like that yeah um so it's probably a good good one to start off with i guess because we need to explain yeah what's been going on well my list of uh health problems through history or through mm. my life has been quite lengthy, lengthy whereas you've been pretty blessed to not really have many at all no. So maybe we could just quickly run through like what you like the main ones that you've had, you know, like skin growing up. Oh uh, yeah. Was, that was about it really. Yeah, perioral dermatitis. If you've ever suffered from that, yeah. you'll know. If you know, you know. No, it's not nice. No, that's been that was probably my biggest battle. Yeah. Um thankfully I was able to Over cure time. that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. My last flare up was when Denzel was a baby and we've been good since then. So, so a long time ago. Yeah, skin issues have always been my my specialty <laughs> <laughs> your weakness yeah yeah so that's about it for you yeah uh, but for me I guess um, I mean as a kid I didn't really have too many problems other than probably I, I every winter I'd get bronchitis so that's yeah. a more of a weakness in the lungs mm -hmm. and so I've actually I've had uh, pneumonia twice in my life now I've actually had pneumonia once yeah yeah so I think oh, I, am I on three am I on two or three I can't remember I, I had like... I, one when I was a kid in Noosa yeah on the Sunshine Coast in Australia so weird because I also had pneumonia when I was in Australia oh yeah true and mum did too yeah, yeah. so I, I, I remember my mum telling me the next morning that I came into the room in the middle of the night and was like yelling and screaming and that the green men were coming onto the island to take us so hallucinating. Just fully hallucinating, yeah. really bad. And then she went to the doctor and she's like, if you'd waited like another day, he would be in like intensive care. Like, it really? Was that bad. Yeah, because I remember like walking down the whole street, all the shops and just going to each shop and finding a place to try and sit. Yeah. Just because I could not stand. So weak. I couldn't physically stand. Yeah. And so my mum was just like, okay, this is not good. Not so, good. But yeah, anyway, I overcame that one. And then the last one was probably when Denzel oh. was quite young. New Year's. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. Um, we went to the Mount. We were at the Mount, which is Papamaya area yeah and you were just out the whole time started going downhill on the drive yeah on the drive down there in the car mm -hmm. and then basically spent the entire holiday on the couch yeah like laid flat on the couch but didn't show many like outward signs of being sick so i was low-key like this guy is dramatic but yeah. it turns out <laughs> you weren't <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah i uh, overcame that one actually i came right just as we were leaving just so, as we were leaving typical Perfect. one thing that i've had uh that you've never had is surgeries Yes, so, never had surgeries myself. Yeah, so I've had quite a few surgeries. Um, I think the first one I ever had, that must have been the when I had all four wisdom teeth out. Although not a major surgery. But it was, it turned out quite major after a while. Yeah, so I had all four taken out. I mean, I had that whole, like, uh, you know, with the, <laughs> like the thing wrapped around the head. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, 
like had the ice bag like wrapped oh, around my chin. Oh, that was chronic. And in tighter. fact, all your surgeries have been since we've been together in the last twelve years, yes. right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I've been there we were, for. All we were like that. dating when I had my wisdom teeth out. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, it was not long after that I got the carpal tunnel syndrome. Yes. So that's when my fingers on this hand, my left hand, started to go. These two fingers would go numb. Yeah. So if I was playing guitar, that also that's the reason why I'm not playing guitar. Anymore. Yeah. It's because I get like uh, tingly fingers and they go numb. Yeah. Because of the nerve in my arm. So if it's he. I went to see the doctor and he basically said, look, it's just a random thing that can happen to anybody and it's where the nerve in your arm just starts to shorten, just randomly shorten. And so then it, this is obviously the catch point. Yeah. So as soon as it shortens, that's where it's the tightest. So they had to go in and like scrape out a whole bunch of bone and give it more room really? to move. And it's been better ever since. But if I like, if I'm, if my arm is bent like this for more, longer than like 20 minutes, then yeah, everything starts to go tingly and numb. Yeah. So that was my second surgery. And like, meanwhile, you know, whenever you go on surgery, they give you like a whole bunch of antibiotics and you know, anti-inflammatories and the whole course, all the things, all and the prescriptions. You were so diligent about taking yeah. every single one of them. Oh yeah, definitely. and the whole course of everything. Yeah, uh, all the pain relief that yeah. they could give you, everything. Yeah. Um, I remember with your wisdom teeth. I'm. I should actually have mine out, but I've, so, been, I've yeah. been putting it off. Been putting it off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, with your wisdom teeth, again, I thought you were being dramatic until that time when you started bleeding out. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and you were, like, over the toilet, like, yeah. literally. No, of... that was my tonsils. Oh, I... wrong surgery. Wrong okay. surgery. Yeah. So this is my neck surgery. Yeah, that's right. Was getting my tonsils out. Yeah. So, in fact, I think it went wisdom teeth, tonsils, uh, carpal tunnel. Yeah, leg. Or elbow. And, yeah, so I had, I had to get my tonsils out because as a kid, um, as I said earlier in the winter, I would have to get, uh, I would get um, bronchitis every winter. Yeah. And so my throat would just flare up. Like, I, for the whole of winter, I, when I would swallow, I'd feel my tonsils literally, like, touch each other. I suppose that leads us on to the air thing. Oh, yes. Which, so, so it resulted in permanent damage. Yeah, well, no, this was when I was three years old. Yeah, so, so obviously your weakness yeah. for all things. Yeah, it might, have, it might have caused like a weakness there. But when I was three years old, basically my mum uh, took me to the beach and I was sitting up on this br uh, stone wall and she was standing down on the beach below me. And I was looking out um, into the water at all the sailing boats and I was like laughing. I was just laughing my head off. And uh, as I was opening my mouth and laughing, she looked inside and she noticed all these big white spots all mm. through my mouth. And she was like, okay, wow, well, I better go get that checked out. So went to the doctor and the doctor basically looked at me and looked at my ear and said, you're like, there's so much scar tissue from a, like a serious ear infection mm. that um, it's just completely deformed into scar tissue and blocked the uh, whole ear canal up. Right. So, and there's like, it's almost not possible to operate on or anything like that. So Sam has been deaf in one ear yep. for his whole life, basically, basically yeah. since as three years old. As long as I can remember. So right. yeah, um, yeah, completely deaf in my left ear. Yeah. And, um... The doctor even said, I've never seen such serious, uh, you know, infection. Like infection or aftermath of an infection without a child ever complaining about it. So, so you mustn't have felt it. I don't know. It might have been a silent ear infection or something. But my mum said that I, leading up to it, I'd never complained or was miserable or anything like that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's just, that happened. Unfortunate, but you've been fine. Yeah, my right ear is kind of like a little bit of a, it's got a little bit of a superpower now. It does. It sort of adjusts and can hear over here a little bit. It's just, yeah. I guess the brain trying to work it out. He plays on it a little bit. <laughs> Selective hearing. Selective hearing, <laughs> honestly. And then I'll whisper something under my breath in him and he'll hear it. Yeah. But if I call him to do something, yeah. <laughs> sorry, deaf. Yeah. <laughs> And so, uh, moving on to the next thing, mm -hmm. uh, I was playing uh, football or soccer, as Americans would call it. Yep. And I went to lunge in to do uh, like a big sliding tackle. And as I was jumping forward, my toes got caught on the ground and then completely sort of ripped my whole ankle backwards. Yes. And I looked down at my foot and it was kind of just dangling like this. And it was like ba like the ankle had almost been completely separated off the leg. I mean, no, no, not the skin was all intact. It wasn't like a compound fracture. Or anything. I wasn't there. Yeah, there was no blood. Or yeah. Anything. But anyway, it was incredibly scary. Um, yes. And I basically had to lie there for about 45 minutes. I actually, it might have been about 30, 35 minutes for the ambulance to get there. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, that was the longest 35 minutes of my life. Probably. You did give me a phone call in that time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
So that was, that was pretty scary. Yeah, so you ended up in hospital, major surgery. Yeah, major emergency reconstructive surgery. Yeah. I remember the doctor coming and saying, he said, you've done a really good job of trying to lose your foot for somebody who wants to keep it. Yeah, <laughs> not ideal. Yeah, because I, I basically fully snapped the uh, fibula, which I think is the outside bone. Mm -hmm. I can't remember all the tibial or fibula. Anyway, it's the one with one the, the sharp pointy ankle bit down the bottom. Yeah. And it pokes out the side oh. of your ankle. That yep. bit had completely snapped. So I had to get a piece of uh, titanium about that long. And yeah. that kind of held everything back in place. And I was in a well, I was in a cast for about six months, probably seven months. It was, was it six months? I think it was, Surely not. Um, it was pretty close to actually no. I think, I think it, it was more like three months. I think it was about three or four months, but then my rehab yeah like lasted for about six months. It felt like six months, but yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, it was horrible. So and you, we had young kids at this point. Very young Denzel kids. Denzel was like probably one. Yeah. About one. Between one and two. Yeah, and Atlanta was obviously about three. Yeah. So, and to have me on my back on the couch for about, you know, four months. Yeah, so was, no work. Yeah, it was really hard. Yeah. Like, especially for, for you. It Who, was intense. Yeah. yeah. Um, showering was difficult. Yeah. Everything was difficult. Yeah. Because Every, it was a everything. full leg cast. Yeah. Um, that you couldn't get wet. No, it was, yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. It was a difficult moment. I mean, I'm still here today, but like. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, that probably, and then, you know, I had all my antibiotics and all my stuff. Each I, time. I, in fact, I remember getting so, like, I was so going for the painkiller. You know how you get that button yep. that injects you with the painkiller? Mm -hmm. I was, like, doing so much of it that when I finally came off it and left the hospital, I was so sick and nauseous. You that, were also filled with rage. Yes. Yeah, and I, I became really angry, too, just because mm -hmm. of all the painkillers and everything that you fill your system with. And yeah, That was a, not a nice time. And also the mental trauma that you're just going through. And, you know, yeah. I was like, oh. You know, I'm basically not a dad for like the next three or four months. Mm. I'm just like useless, just sitting on the couch. It was a bad headspace during that time. Yeah. It, it was, was really bad. tough. Yeah, it was bad. But it was the wake-up call that I needed. Yeah. Big time. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess uh, what would be the next thing? The next thing was probably... Uh, so I had a, a small procedure done. Um, there was nothing wrong with me or anything. I just had a small procedure done and I ended up getting a really bad injury yeah from that small procedure mm -hmm. and in fact it was so bad that um i here's the thing so unfortunately in new zealand you can't sue for medical malpractice no you can't do anything like that so you if, if something happens to you on the operating table i think maybe it's like if you're covered by insurance your insurance would, might do something for you yeah but you cannot take that person and sue them or you know, take them to court or anything like that. No. I mean, unless it's like a crime, unless they've done something seriously. You criminal. are only covered by ACC. Yeah, accident. At that point. Yeah, accident yeah. cover yeah. compensation. Yeah. Yeah. So that was uh, that was a big thing for me to go through because um, once again, all the pain relief, all the medication. Yeah. You know, and we're in a space of ten years, right? Yeah. And, and it's just one thing after another. One thing after another. Yeah. Yeah, it just seemed never ending. I know, but going back to if I was in America, I could have easily taken that doctor yeah. to to court and, right. and sued him. Yeah, yeah, just because of how he he really acted like he just wasn't sort of interested in his work. No, you know, and it was he was very sort of just head yeah. head out of the head away from the game. Yeah. So, yeah, that was incredibly traumatic. And so what happened was because that injury was so horrific, um, I had to go on first of all really strong painkillers. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, a long bout of uh, antibiotics. Again. Yet again. Mm -hmm. Probably about my fourth or fifth um, round in my life. Yeah. Um, and and strong pain relief. I mean, yeah, each strong. time, each time that you had your surgeries, yeah. it was strong pain relief. It was like codeine and stuff like that. Yeah, it for was, a long time. Yeah, it was the strong stuff. Yeah. And so that one was uh, pretty horrific. And in fact, that because the injury happened, mm -hmm. uh, the surgical injury happened. Then I went on all the medication, and then the medication is what caused the next thing. Yeah. So it was just like bang, bang, bang. Yeah. Um, one after another, and this is all in the space of like a year. So this was about five years ago. Yes. Yeah, probably um, about five or six years ago. When we first, it was all over the time that we had bought this house. Yeah. So we didn't originally live in this house ourselves. We only moved in two years ago. Yeah, but we rented it out the first three years. Yes, other people were in here. Yeah. Um, and... So it was quite stressful buying a house yeah. um, because that in yes. itself is another story. Yeah, that basically sent me into a breakdown. Of oh, that. so all sorts going on. And yeah. then and then what? You got gastritis. So, yeah, I basically uh, woke up one morning and had breakfast. Uh, we were at the farm. 
mm. at the cousin's farm, yeah. and we uh, I ate breakfast, and then I just didn't feel quite right in the stomach, and I sort of started to feel like a very burny sort of acidic uh, sensation in my stomach, and so I was like, okay, that's not quite right. So obviously the first thing you do is you just see if it goes, mm. you know, and you just sort of try and ride it out, but it didn't go, and so I was. Like, okay, this is everything, every little thing that I, like, if I had just had, like, a bite of an apple, yeah. I would feel, like, each individual little piece of apple in my stomach, and it was just burning. Mm. It was almost like a raw organ. Yeah. So, basically, all the p pills and everything that I was taking, all the, uh, you know, uh, painkillers and, and antibiotics and anti-inflammatories, and there was a whole host of stuff that I was taking. Yeah. Uh, basically completely stripped out my stomach lining like just destroyed it mm. made it collapse and basically my uh yeah my stomach lining was just gone it was just completely gone so, so it was like a raw organ with like no protection from your food you know what even water like burnt yeah. like it was like horrible it felt like everything i put like in my mouth like and swallowed it felt like like i was pouring lava or acid mm. down there it was like agony how long was that going on for before you, try, you know, researched, found yeah. out what it was and then tried to heal? Well, probably, if, I don't know, a week or two. Because, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I didn't want to let it go too long and I had no idea what it was. Yeah. And I just wanted to, because, here, and here's the whole thing where I, I believe personally that I think there's a huge over-reliance on Western medicine mm. these days. Um, I, it has its place. It definitely has its For place. Sure. It's, but I think there's so much that we can do with natural medicine uh, before it gets to a threshold where I think you need to cross over into doing other things. Right. You know, like for instance, my, uh, you know, if you need surgery, you need surgery, right? Yeah, Like there's, course. I mean, all of my surgeries weren't avoidable. That's right. You know, I couldn't just heal them, you know. Yeah. With... And antibiotics 100% has its place. Yes. Um, but. But I think I used them when I didn't actually need to. Or here's I, the other I thing. I used them too much. You used to get headaches. Yes. And you would take a lot pain of relief. For that yeah. quite consistently yeah so just panadol is what we call yeah our pain relief here um i i basically never take pain relief no uh, i wasn't raised that way we just didn't reach for pain relief it's just yeah yeah so not for me, something we did for me it was just if, if you feel something take a pill right you know so if, if i ever had a headache or something growing up my mum would say have three glasses of water mm. or have a sleep yeah that we, we would never reach for pain relief. Yeah. Um, obviously, if I was extremely sick and had like a thumping headache, we'd take pain relief. We're not, you know, against yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. But it wasn't something that we relied on. And so I used to watch you pop the pills and I was Quite like, yeah. do you need that? Yeah. Like, no, no. It probably contributed to, you know, a yeah. lot of stuff. Yeah. So uh, when you did get the gastritis it yep. all sort of came all you all of the surgeries and the medication everything just came to a bit of a head yeah and i mean you stopped pain relief from that day yes so i've only taken one small so that in the last six years i've taken one pill of pain relief and that was just a very low strength mm. panadol thing for a really bad headache yeah like i've never had a headache like that before it was really bad yeah and, and necessary. But, but the question that they're probably asking is, why didn't you go to the doctor when you started feeling the burning in your stomach? Yeah, so, so you actually never went to the doctor. I never went to the doctor yeah. because I knew that if I went to the doctor, they would try and fix it with what caused the problem. So, Potentially, yeah. Yeah, which is more pills and more stuff that has other side effects. And that's the thing. That's the thing about modern medicine is, unfortunately, it usually fixes one problem mm. but comes with a whole host of other side effects. Yeah. And so I didn't want that. I wanted to try. And so that sent me down the rabbit hole yeah. of I didn't know anything about natural medicine or anything like that before no. that. Like, absolutely nothing. In fact, I, th I probably had, like, a, I thought it was a bit sort of fruity. Right. You know, like, only sort of hippies and stuff do that. Yeah. And I just decided to just research it because I, I was just going to tackle it myself and try and figure it out and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And that's when I stumbled across um, Dr. Axe's website. Yeah. So Dr. Axe is a guy who is specializes in natural medicine. Yeah. And he has a um, YouTube channel and a website. And so basically, I was able to kind of narrow it down to a few different things that I might have on his based on his website. Mm. So I just looked at a few different articles and the symptoms that I was experiencing. And yeah, I eventually uh, came to the conclusion that I had corrosive gastritis. Yeah. So that's basically just where your whole stomach lining is just completely eaten away and there's just nothing there. Yeah. And they, I mean, it's pretty scary, you know, I mean, it's, even Dr. X has to say that, you know, if you have corrosive gastritis, your 
you know, the threat of stomach cancer is higher. Mm. Um, the threat of, you know, all sorts of other digestive issues are higher. Mm. So that's when I really sort of, that around that time is where I really learned to just sort of take my health into my own hands. Yeah. You know, and just hold it, like, just really just take a hold of it. and Or just, like, be proactive with health. Yeah, be proactive. Yeah. So try to leave a, lead a healthier lifestyle rather than when something goes wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, down yeah, pre it. preventative. Yeah. Do more prevention. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I was I wasn't really in thinking about prevention at that point. I was thinking about healing mm. and trying to get rid of this corrosive gastritis. And so basically, there was a salad that I would eat probably every day. Yeah. For a, at least three or four months. It was a long time. Yeah. So it was like kale. It was black beans. Black beans. Actually, no, it didn't start with black beans. Oh, it did was you just, add that? Yeah, I added it later on for protein. Yeah. But at first, for months and months, it was just kale chopped up. And also, this in New Zealand, we're very fortunate to have uh, really good access to organic food. Yeah. So I was able to go down to the local organic market and get just all completely organic foods. Yeah. Like no sprays or pesticides or anything like that. Yeah. And I had kale, fennel, bulb. Um, sauerkraut sauerkraut yeah. and olive oil apple cider vinegar mm. and then like a little bit of salt and pepper yeah and that was basically it uh you had a lot of bone broth over that time as well so that's another thing that's probably the key thing yeah the, key, the number one thing that i had a lot of was bone broth yeah and again bone broth does have a bit of a bad name in certain places because i don't think they've used again they've used uh mass produced beef bones or, or chicken bones. Oh, okay. And you can get all sorts of like leaching from, oh, the, really? from the marrow we, of the bone broth. We only use organic. Only organic. Yeah. So again, and it, I, I was willing to just pay that little bit extra just to get make sure it was organic as well. I think, I just had the peace of mind. you know, if you start to think about food as medicine, it doesn't work with everything, obviously. I mean, sometimes, well, a lot of the time Western medicine has its place. Yeah. But I think if, like for me personally, if I can find a natural way to heal something, hmm first yeah um if it's not life-threatening yep. then i will try to do that yeah um and then you know work in together with western medicine yeah because there's so much that we've lost over the years of how our ancestors did heal things yeah and they survived there's, using something yeah and there's, <laughs> it's still so valid today yeah. i don't know why we don't delve into it a bit more yeah um on the in the whole though we gen generally eat quite healthy like we are quite yeah. health focused and I think it was since that that we became more health focused like yeah we yeah. it's been like a journey because I remember when, it, when I was pregnant with Atlanta we had so much fast food oh I know like yeah. we weren't always like that it took this kind of rehealing your stomach to kind of place that emphasis on what our, our lifestyle yeah well that could me doing all that research on my stomach issue with the gastritis is mm -hmm. really what sort of opened the door for the family to think of uh think in certain ways like food is medicine yeah so um, unfortunately with the natural healing unfortunately it usually is the longer harder road right because your body is slowly healing but yeah. it's doing it without any side effects right. whereas me western medicine likes to fix it as soon as possible well they, quick they fix the symptoms of it yeah but not um, the cause but sometimes not the cause yeah um but we should probably get to the recent episode yeah so the recent episode is, in fact, why we haven't been trying that many uh, boxes. We haven't been able to open many boxes of American snacks. Because yep. although they are delicious, mm. they also have stuff in them that's not so great for gut health. Right. And lots of you guys have mentioned these types of things in the comments. And we do know. Yeah. Um, it's the same as food here. It's the same as food everywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, processed, packaged food. Yeah is unfortunately yeah. not always healthy. Not always healthy. I mean, I think it's fine for just your average Joe who hasn't got any problems. You can have yeah. it every now and then. But since you have a history yes. of gut issues, yeah. we were very aware of how much we were consuming and we tried to space out how many times we were opening boxes and trying that, not just for you, but for the kids as well. Yeah. Um, because if you think about it, you know, you got... Like, the people sending it probably have grown up on these treats, but as a treat. Yeah. Whereas when we are unpackaging these boxes, it's, like, weekly. Yeah. And even That's you guys probably don't eat it weekly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So we tried so hard to put some real space between how many boxes we were doing. Yeah. And how much we were consuming, um, just from a health perspective. But it obviously, well, reached a point with you. 
Not yeah. probably from the boxes. No, but... I don't think the boxes caused anything. No. Um, it was just unfortunately the boxes was uh, the box the snacks in the boxes were was the sacrifice that had to be made or mm. one of the sacrifices that had to be made uh, in order for me to get better. Yeah. So I it all started around the time when we did the uh, episode of opening up the. Uh, subscribers box on live television right so we actually suspect this was stress induced instead yes. of um like medications or food yeah Do you know so what I mean? one, one thing about me uh, is i have my nature is to worry a lot mm. so i'm a very deep thinker i sit there and i internalize a lot and i sort of you know i run through all the worst case scenarios and it really just sort of mm. my mind just like mulches through everything and it's just constantly churning over and so, I don't know why, I've just always been like that ever since I was a kid. Um, but, yeah, it didn't help me in this instance where, because I was just so, I guess, uh, I guess not so much anymore, now that I'm coming out the other end of it. Yeah. And I am feeling a lot better, by the way. I am sort of... Which is why we're able to talk about it. Yes. Uh, so, basically, uh, what happened was... Uh, I I was very nervous because you know I I cared so much about you know what people think. And... Okay, but can I just be honest? When we we were not given much notice for that no. um, TV oh, appearance, like probably about six or seven hours. An email was sent to us at ten thirty a.m. in the morning, yep. asking us if we would like to be on TV that night. And we were filming by five p.m. Right, so we didn't have much time to even think about it. Or warning. We didn't yeah. even have much time to panic about it yeah. or be nervous because yeah. it was just happening a few hours later i know so we just made a snap decision and we were like yep let's do it well i mean we'd be silly if we didn't do this yeah. by the way i should say that we were asked to do it once more once before and we turned it down because they wanted us to comment on a political issue all oh, right yeah. and we didn't want to do that so this was the second time they approached us, and it was really positive. They just because it was to, about it was about our story. It was about our story rather yeah. than politics. Yeah. Um. And so we were like, "That's cool. We'd be yeah. kind of stupid not to do this, even though it was ex incredibly nerve wracking." Yeah. Right? So my natural reaction is to say no to this stuff. Yeah. To say no because. But I was shocked because Sam was like, "Yep, let's do it." Yeah. And you were barely nervous all day. I yeah. was like, "Okay." And Sam's the type of guy that is like i'm never going to do public speaking i'm never going to yeah. like your comfort zone is actually quite small but yeah. your skill set is really big so i'm yeah. always saying to you <laughs> sam you're but you're good at this you know like i always say yes you can you're you can do things but you put yourself in these small little circles but not this time yeah. you were like yep let's do it you were organizing everything yeah. and i was like mate but he's in, handling this like a champ inside i was like really i was like my nerves are just being absolutely wrecked right so, so you internalized really internalized really it. really into like i didn't even know you were that nervous yeah which, I, I wasn't that nervous so I, I i mean i wonder if if you internalize it and you hold everything in deep inside of you if it actually does affect your health like oh, your stress, actual your definitely. physical health rather than outwardly just sort of ex displaying right you know how you're actually feeling the thing with me as well is that everything is outward yeah exactly so I'm i never more, yeah. internalize i'm i'm more of an extrovert i'm sort of more i don't like being the center of attention i don't you like mean introvert sorry yeah i'm more of an introvert and, and ever since i was a little kid i mean even to be in like school plays school speeches anything that required me to get up in front of people yeah. i would absolutely hate it was a passion. straight no from yeah. you yeah like my mum asked me to be like the extra because my mum used to work in movies yeah so, so many times i was offered to be like an extra and just like so, you know a kid that was running past yeah in like the village or something yeah you know one of the kids and then i would always just say no nah, no nah, way not no. doing it and denzel's exactly the same oh exactly he's exactly the same like i don't like being uh the center of attention if there's no control right so the reason i like youtube is because you're in control yeah you're filming it yeah. You know, we're just in the family environment. Also, we're not in front of the, you know, 20,000 people that yeah. potentially watch it. Yeah, exactly. You know, so there's not that pressure. But going back to that day, you were, you just, well, you set everything up. It was yep. all go. Yep. We got interviewed. It, you know, it was live. Yeah. Literally the TV presenters that we've grown up watching, you know, speaking to us. Yeah. Quite, you know. Yeah. It's quite out there. But also, but also, like, another thing, another fact, I, it was one of many things leading up to that I wasn't sleeping very well either. That's true. I, I was having really bad sleeping issues. Yeah. Um, and then I was also, like I said, I was also really scared of what everyone was going to, like, what everyone was going to think of me. Yeah. And I just got, yeah, it's, it's a very sort of selfish way of thinking. And that's another thing uh, that I was, uh, I was, had become incredibly selfish. I was, like, totally wrapped up in myself. 
all I could think about was myself and how I'm going to feel and all this sort of stuff. You know, mm. I wasn't, I wasn't making sure, you know, others needs were being met and everything like that. And then all of that, you know, mixed in with, and like, I mean, we weren't eating terribly, but we also weren't eating the best either. Not our best work, yeah. but you know, not it wasn't, terrible. It wasn't bad, no. but it wasn't great either. Yeah. And uh, I, it was about two days after we filmed that um, episode where I woke up in the middle of the night and I just had this like searing sort of burning. Yep. Back to the burning again. Mm. But it was down lower on my side, like just underneath my rib cage. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wow. And it was like, it was almost like sort of just like pulsating, mm -hmm. like really like strong burning sensation. I was like, okay, that's really weird. I've never felt that down there. Um, you know, I've had burning in my stomach and stuff before, but never down there. So, so I was a like, different spot. Yeah. I was like, okay, that's really odd. And then, uh, you know, again, I just sort of tried to see if it just disappeared. Maybe it was just a weird thing. But it did disappear for a bit. It sort of came and went, right? Yeah, so it just came, it disappeared, and then it would come come on, and then over the course of the next, like, two or three weeks, it just yep. got worse and worse and worse, mm -hmm. where it turned into, like, one spot sort of in the center of my abdomen was, like, quite sore, mm. and then it was, like, on the side it started, like, throbbing, mm. like an ache, like a, like a deep ache, and I was just like, wow, okay, this is weird. It's like sort of just all over and it's weeks, weeks of this by now. Yeah. So I was like, okay, here we go. I think I have to go back and see, you know, Dr. X's website and try and figure out what's going on, what I might have. And I kind of knew that it was something to do with the colon or the, the bowel. Right. So, cause I could sort of feel like food going past mm. certain areas and it hurting. So, so cue the freak out. Yes. So since it had been five years since I'd really had any major health stuff go down um yeah it was pretty scary because i knew that i hadn't really felt anything like that before right um to that extent so it wasn't the same issue come back not and you knew how to deal with it it yeah. was a different thing it was I, at first was uh upper digestive system mm. this was lower digestive system yeah so colon the or large intestine mm. is what it's also known as and i just knew that yeah, something was really not good. Not good. I just knew that it was, it felt like raw in there. It yep. almost, it almost felt the same as when I lost my stomach lining, but it felt like my large intestine had lost its lining. Right. So everything was just burning and scraping. It was almost like you can imagine like an infected cut and someone just sort of rubbing their finger over it like yep. that constantly, yep. you know, whenever food went yep. past it. Yeah. So, so cue all of dietary changes. Yep. Um, back to like bone broth protocol. Back to the protocol. Supplements or yep. na natural supplements and everything. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, you did you did fast for a while too. I fasted. I, I did a bone broth fast. Right. Um, so um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I did the bone broth fast. Yeah. And this was after Sam had done it and you were kind of out of the woods by then, eh? And so yes. it's, it's really for resetting the gut. So I think yep. that was kind of your first thing. It's like, right, I need to reset my gut. Yes. Um, and give your digestive system a break from food yep. to see if you could try and heal that inflammation. But the thing is, is that I wasn't taking any medication. No. That's that's what that's what had me really worried. Right. Because I knew that I I couldn't pinpoint. Oh, I took that and that did this to me. Yeah. And therefore, you know, now I have to backtrack and fix it. Right. I was just like completely like out in the open, like not knowing anything. Yeah. About what it could be or what caused it, and I was thinking back, and I was like, okay, leading up to that. Uh, the television episode, mm -hmm. it was, I was like s under serious mental pressure and stress that mm. I put on myself. Mm. Um, and also like, like I said, not sleeping well. And I think those two yeah. things, and also we'd stopped doing the gym for quite a while. Yeah. Our, our trial had finished. Right. And we had to wait a month yep. to start it up again. Yeah. So it happened in that time where yep. we stopped exercising, no sleep and really stressed, yep. like mentally, like under a lot of pressure. But strange, it was strange for me because I didn't see you as really stressed at that time. You must have been internalizing yeah, I was. the stress. Yeah, I was. And I, I was just totally wrapped up in myself, completely selfish. And I always like to think of all these things that I've been through, maybe probably the last you know, three or four things that we've mentioned, I always like to think of them as wake up calls. Mm. And I think that God was just getting my attention and he was, you know, just get your eyes off yourself. Recalibrate. Stop. Yeah, just stop you know, thinking about yourself and how you feel and how this might affect you and that. Mm. And, you know, if you're not getting enough sleep, you know, don't take it out on, you know, everybody around you, mm. you know, and, it, you know, have a good attitude and yeah. just be grateful. And it just really helps you sort of get back down to the basics right. of life. Because if you don't have your health, exactly, nothing means anything. Yep. And so when that's, when that's threatened, yeah. you know, and you know that you haven't been living right, mm. Then yeah, the only thing you can do is just get your life right, mm. and then everything else you know will fall into place. Like yeah. the thing, like you've said quite a few times, 
the thing that you've noticed is that even when some people are threatened with health issues, they kind of just carry on. Yeah. They just carry on Not eat, you. eating their stuff, yeah. drinking whatever they want, you know, just living their life, you know, smoking, whatever. Yeah. And they don't really, they just don't want to give it up. No. Whereas me, as soon as I have anything that I suspect could be serious, mm. I'm instantly into like three days of just like just bone broth, yeah. just pure water. Like all of the self-control in the world. But can I just talk about the lack of self-control when Wait. you are healthy? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Whereas I'm, I'm like in the middle. Honestly, I struggled with the bone broth fast. I ended up eating at the end of the third day. Yeah. I didn't tell anyone that. <laughs> but you weren't doing it under the threat of anything. With oh, I life. was just doing it to try and... Reset the gut. Yeah, because you were like, I think you should... Because, you know, here's the thing is that we're traveling soon. Yeah. Okay. Three months out. Yeah. COVID times, you yeah. know, they Kinda hit cold. me hard. I never used to be the size I am now. Yeah. Um. So the last three years have seen me... I don't know. I feel like I lost control of my health. I think a lot of people can relate to that. We just did a lot of not moving. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know. And just like boxed up. And we had a total job change. Like I used to run my own business. Yeah. I used to, you know, meet clients. I used to drive around to locations. I used to be busy in Auckland dropping the kids off, you know, to different places. Yeah. And all of that, you know, well, COVID times hit. Then we were a year, a year and a half into that. Mm. And we, you know, we moved. Yeah. And then we came here and at first you were commuting, but, you know, working from home is a whole different ball game on your body. Yeah, definitely. Mental, um, mental health as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, probably even more so than your physical body because once your mental health is, you know, struggling yeah. Yeah. then your physical body but is close behind it. I suppose I never, you wouldn't think that your mental health would struggle if you work from home, but it, if anyone works from home, you if you know, you know. Yeah. Uh, you're not meeting people. Um, yeah. I guess you're just not going out. You, it's a whole new level of self-control that you've got to have. Yeah. And, you know, we had joined the gym because we knew we wanted to be at our best traveling. Yeah. Like, there was no way that I wanted to uh, be unhealthy or sluggish or slow whilst we're traveling with the kids. You know, we need to be on our game. Yeah. We need to be full of energy. And I felt sluggish is probably the word that I felt the most. Yeah. So that's why we joined the gym. We were like, this is it. Like, this is a once in a lifetime trip. Yeah. We're going all in. Yeah. And we want to be proud of our photos and our content. We want to be giving everything to the content. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know? Yeah. Like, if you're tired and sluggish and, you know, you're just not, you can't give everything. Yeah. So we had already joined the gym. Yeah. But, and I've lost 12 kgs wow. in the last two months. Yeah. So that's, I don't know how many uh, pounds that is. No. But you know, I could probably figure it out. I mean, our subscribers did notice that you had lost weight. Yes. So but, it wasn't through like self-control or anything like that. It's because I no. had health issues and my protocols are to do like bone broth fast. Yeah. And basically, because every time you eat, you're actually putting your body under stress. Right. To like to process all the food. Yeah. And uh, I just wanted to take that stress off the system because, uh, like, the, the thing is, is that when I was when I felt the stuff in my colon, it was like when there was no food going mm. going past. It was fine. It couldn't didn't feel a thing. No, there was no pain. Yeah, it wasn't a consistent pain. Yes, so, and it never got worse. No. So it kind of hit a certain point and yeah. then just stayed there. And it never. And then it was kind of just dipping down. I had like a, a day where I was like, no, I don't, I don't think I felt anything today. Yeah. And then the next morning I'd wake up and it would be like burning and throbbing and everything again. Yeah. And so obviously that's, um, that's another thing that I drew back from my gastritis days was that I was like, I'm going to try and tackle this without going to the doctor. Yeah. Because I'm looking for certain markers, and if one of those things turns up, you know, like vomiting or fevers or, you know, uh, bleeding or anything like that, mm. um, I'll go to the doctor. Right. So I'm there's not, always. I'm not, not going to be silly. No. There's always a certain point uh, where you know you need to seek medical help. Yeah. But because you were armed with all the tools from round one, I suppose, with the gastritis. Yeah. You, and let's be honest, it healed up pretty quite quickly, didn't it? In, yeah, it in did. the scheme of things, yeah, the gastritis went on for months. Yes, um, but you did get there in the end. About seven or eight months. Right. So that the gastritis is probably the craziest hit story for all of healing. For yeah. Me. So uh, and also going back to um, so I've lost twenty almost twenty seven pounds in the last two months. Yeah. So that's about twelve kgs. Well, I'm happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 
something crazy happened, okay? So with my gastritis, right, I, like I said, we were eating, uh, I was eating that salad every day, you know, listening to all these YouTube videos about how food is medicine and just do the natural thing. And I was like, I got to a point where it had just only slightly improved. Mm. So I, I was still burning almost, I might have a, the odd meal where it didn't burn. I couldn't feel anything. Yeah. I was like, oh, my stomach lining must be rebuilding. And then the next day, obviously, it would come back. Mm. So, I, and this this went on for about seven or eight months. Because healing of your gut isn't always linear. It's, you know. Yeah, it goes ups and, yeah. up and down. And then it and just, it also depends on what you're eating. And, yeah, all your, like the different nutrients that you're having and everything. And yeah. also what your body might be lacking. Yeah. In order to fight it. Yeah. So, or rebuild the gut. Yeah. Yeah. And the gut is such an insanely complicated thing. Yeah. I mean, all the flora and the bacteria and everything. Microbiome. Good bacteria, good bacteria, bad bacteria, and it's all fighting each other. And that's basically what I... The reason that I've probably had so many health issues is because of all the antibiotics that I've taken. Which probably. just strips out all of the bacteria, good and, and bad. I think once you have a round of antibiotics, we, myself included, yeah. you don't think to like rebuild the gut. Because yeah. it's, it's essentially got rid of all of your microbiome or, yeah you know well they the say bad, the bad bacteria and the good bacteria yeah 80 percent of your immune system is in the gut so i was stoked to hear um recently the doctors are prescribing probiotics for after a round nice. of antibiotics so yeah. i think it's become you know quite known yeah that we are affecting our guts yeah guts <laughs> don't just buy yogurt if you have antibiotics because yeah. that's not going to do much you actually yeah. need to buy some like i have 50 billion that's how strong my probiotic yeah, is. Yeah. And I don't feel anything. I don't feel sick or like nauseous or, yeah. you know, I don't have any side effects from having a probiotic that strong. Yeah. So I think that you need to just, for the probiotic, you can go really strong. Yeah. So I was taking 3 billion and I was like, okay. And then I did some research and I found out that, yeah, I can I could buy one that was, it was called, uh, it was Dr. X's um, product and it was called the ultimate, um, what's his, uh, Ancient Nutrition? Yeah, that's yeah. his brand, Ancient Nutrition. Yeah. And yeah, 50 billion was the one, and his are all soil-based organisms. Yeah. So instead of the bovine, or which is the cows. Cows, yeah. Yeah, all the antibiotics from, uh, sorry, all the um, probiotics from the cows. Yeah. So apparently the soil-based organisms are some of the best that you can get mm. because they also survive the digestion process more as well. Right. So a lot of the good bacteria actually survives and makes it into the gut and ah, sets itself up. Okay. Whereas the other stuff, it doesn't really uh, handle that too well. Uh, and they even say that people who own dogs uh, twi have twice yeah. the strength of the immune system than those who don't own dogs because the dogs go outside, yeah. roll around in the grass and the dirt and everything, and then come inside and bring all those spores yeah. from the from the dirt outside in the earth. And, you know, they give them a cuddle and they're, like, scratching them and patting them and then they breathe in that's the, all the spores from outside. Mm -hmm. And it just, like, it's, that's why, like, farmers. Sounds so, fruity, but. It sounds fruity, but, that, I mean, that's why, like, farmers make, like, the best rugby players in New Zealand. Yeah. You know, because they, they grew up rolling right. around in the mud. Bowden you know. Barrett. Yeah, Bowden Barrett. Richie, Rich, Richie McCaw. Yeah. You know, all the best. Salt of the those. earth guys. Yeah. So, back to your crazy Thanks. experience. Yeah, so how I was actually healed of, um of my corrosive gastritis. So like I said, I was, I was seven or eight months down this track of almost getting nowhere. Yeah. You know, like just be, I was being so diligent with all my supplements and my food and my healthy eating and everything like that. I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm so determined to just heal it yeah. just naturally and just, you know, do the right thing. So uh, we ended up chatting to, it was one of your cousins, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Anna. Yeah, and she mentioned, um, Anna's the one who helped us with the treasure hunt video, by the way. Yeah. So we uh, we, were, we were chatting, uh, and then she said, um, I know a guy who, was it who, who calls him Dr. Zap? <laughs> no, we called him oh, Dr. Oh, we called Zep. him that. Okay, so she mentioned this guy who had this machine. Yeah. And, and she's like, it sounds fruity. Yeah. And it does sound fruity. So the name of the actual process of this healing that this doctor uses is called bioresonance. So it's basically like everything in our bodies runs off different frequencies. Right. So your brain will run off a certain frequency. Your lungs will have a certain I frequency. I think every organ has a different sort of yeah. frequency. So ev everything has its own the wa running theory. wavelength. Yeah. And so what happened was... With, she told she told us all about it and she's like it's not spiritual yeah. like it's not because we were like oh we that's don't what wanna... i thought it was yeah we thought it was a little bit like yeah mm, hanging we... up the crystals yeah and, do we want to you know stones and everything do like we want to do this yeah uh but it but it wasn't anything to do with spiritual no stuff. so it was it's like 
the most non-invasive like medical procedure I've ever had in my life. Right. I just had to like but anyway. So before I'd gone there, she was explaining what it was, and I was just like, "Are you kidding me?" Yeah. Like, I'm not that desperate. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think so. Yeah. You know that sounds really fruity. Like I was, I was really skeptical. Yeah. Super skeptical, and so I. I, I, but you know what? I, like I said, I was eight months down the path, yeah. and I was just done with everything. I just thought, why not just go give it a go? Well, I think we mentioned it to my dad, and he's done a lot of research into different things, yes, health things, and you know, yeah. And he's like, oh no, no, I know, I, I I've yeah, heard about that. Yeah, he's heard about it. Yeah, yeah it's it, it's definitely a a physical thing, not a spiritual thing. You know, yeah. And he's like, it's legit. Yeah. But so, didn't know there was anyone in New Zealand doing it. No, so there was a guy actually like probably what 15, 20 minutes from where we live. Oh, yeah. probably not even there. Not was even there. Five minute drive. He was literally just around the corner. Just around the corner. Yeah, and so anyway, I I go and see him with uh, a lot of doubt, mm -hmm. like a lot of doubt, just thinking, what is this like? Kooky... But were you slightly scared as well because his machine can pick up sinister things? Yeah, any any health problems, any cancers, and, and it can basically it, it it tells you what's wrong with you on a cellular level. Right. So it's like. Yeah, it can pinpoint a lot of stuff. Yeah. But anyway, so I go in there and I tell him about all my problems and he's like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, he, he doesn't like to use the machine that much on people. No. So it has to be, you know, you have to be having a lot of symptoms. And I said, I'm eight months into this and he's like, okay, just come into this other room. And there was basically like a lazy boy, big leather chair yeah. that I sat down in and then right in front of me was this big screen TV. Mm -hmm. And then he said, all you have to do is just put these headphones on. So yeah. I just put these headphones on. And it's basically so he can just he has, he sits over in the corner of the room on this machine. It Does almost, he talk to you through? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it almost looks like a big sort of like photocopier, one of those old school like faxes Serious? that you see in offices. But yeah. it was like all these multi levels with all these like switches and and you're just like what and knobs and everything like that. And anyway, this, the TV switches on, and I basically see you know like the Leonardo da Vinci man where it's got the yeah. the, the outline of the man yeah like it's, with the circle yeah yeah so it's yeah. basically got that and it's got the circle around but it's kind of got this like three D globe that's surrounding the man okay the picture of the man the man is supposed to be me in this case <laughs> so I was just like looking at this and I was like okay that's weird and anyway he switches the machine on and then basically it's like the globe would be like pinched and then pulled in and pinpointed to like places that issues issues that you know aren't right with your body mm -hmm. and so he started pinpointing things that i knew that i had wrong with me that i never told him about so he would never have known these things no i never he never spoke to anyone else but me like not didn't speak to you or anything no didn't give me information I, from I anybody even, else yeah. and so i that's like uh because i played soccer quite a lot back then yeah and i knew i'd pulled my hamstring only just a that's couple right. months before yeah and he it basically Put, like pinpointed a really big one pinpointed right into my um, muscle mm -hmm. and he said oh wow what have you done to your leg and I said oh I'm, I play soccer quite a bit and I, I got a bad leg injury just like a couple of months ago you were getting like physio for that at the time eh? yeah so I had all these little tiny problems that he was oh you know what's wrong with your tailbone and I was like oh, I must have been playing with Denzi like wrestling or something and then I accidentally hit my tailbone yeah. and I was look he was asking me all these little questions and I was like yeah actually yeah I, I did have that happen yeah to me. yeah and so that's when I knew, I kind of switched on, I was like, okay, this, this, he's onto something here. Yeah, yeah. Like, this isn't just bogus. Yeah. This isn't just like fruity, you know, like crazy alternative medicine type stuff. Fruity tooty. Yeah. And so, and obviously the biggest, uh, you know, pinpointing was going straight into my stomach area. Right. And he said, okay, yeah, there's, there's something. Something going on. Something not good here. Mm -hmm. So basically what happened is it switched from that picture of, of my body to, uh, it basically is like a cross section of each of all the organs. Yeah. So like it was like first he did the esophagus. So it was like you imagine like the esophagus and then taken in half and then looking down at the the thing of the esophagus. Wow. Like started from literally from the beginning of the digestive tract to the end. Right. And he goes through each organ. Yeah. And he basically looks. Uh, it basically cuts open a cross section and then it. Uh, there was like a little key uh, where it said like green. And it, it was different shapes too. So like green circle was good, healthy mm -hmm. cells. Um, yellow triangle was like you know okay, but mm -hmm. you know still not there's not not much wrong there. Maybe a bit of like scar tissue or something. Mm -hmm. And then like it, then it would go to like red, uh, I don't know square. And then it was like that was like okay, so there's infection there. Mm -hmm. And then a black, um, I can't remember what it was. It was another shape like a black hexagon or something. That was like most of the time cancer. Ugh. like something your mutation you know yeah. something really bad was going on yeah and so i was just sitting there and i was freaking out and i was just like i'm gonna see the black stuff like, i know it you know really I was just like, oh i was just like I, it's like 
like the anxiety my life was just being held on my hands like right in front of me like this yeah. and i was just like oh my goodness and what this... is what is gonna happen anyway i went through bit by bit did the esophagus did the no blacks no black no nothing did the stomach he yeah. did the stomach and it was like mostly green and then mostly like it was a little bit of yellow and i was yeah. like okay i wasn't expecting that i yeah. thought my stomach was just gonna be like black 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 yeah. like really bad but mm -hmm. it was like riddled with something because it wasn't healing and so I then he went from the stomach to the gallbladder because the gallbladder is what was responsible for providing bile and right. stuff into your um, stomach. Right. Like pumps it in. I think I think that is. And anyway, he basically it, it came up and it was just like the whole thing was just red. It was just like red, 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 like the whole way through my gallbladder. So what was red? Red's not good. Infection. No, red's like uh, yeah, red's infection or just not operating right it's just non-functional like it's completely it's like idling basically wow you know, it's not dead but it's just idling yeah and he said your gallbladder has basically stalled he said it's, there's just no function at all it's like you can imagine you know something that's just yeah. supposed to be doing something because people can have their gallbladders removed eh? yeah it's not like one of those necessary no but the thing is, is when you don't have like bile being pumped into your stomach, when you don't have a stomach lining, right. everything is just burning. So that's why, because it was idling and not working, you yeah. couldn't repair the stomach. So the, the start of the digestion pro, uh, process basically wasn't there for me. Right. So, the, you know, digestion usually starts in the stomach. Yeah. And so I was just like, it wasn't starting there because mm. it would just get into there, have no bile, no stomach lining, nothing. Yeah. And then that, that you know, I couldn't do anything about it. So he, he basically, he said, all right. I know what the problem is now. I need to kickstart your gallbladder. So you just need to sit here. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna uh, fire the frequency yeah. that your gallbladder needs into it for the next five minutes. Or zap it, as we yeah, say. Or, or zap it. <laughs> and I was, and he said you might feel a little bit nauseous. Um, with a gallbladder, it's quite common to feel a little bit funny or a little bit sort of weak. Right. And I was like, okay, okay, that's fine. So yeah. I, was, I didn't have to like take any clothes off or anything. It wasn't nah. like a, you know visit to the doctor's office yeah all i had was the headphones on and i was just sitting there and on then this, he like, just like zapped you big comfy tray. I, I didn't there was nothing physical i couldn't feel anything i couldn't hear anything he yeah. was just on his machine just like blasting my gallbladder with these frequencies <laughs> so fruity yeah and so and, I, and he's like do you feel anything and i was like absolutely nothing like mm. zero and so he was like okay well that's that's good so yeah at least you didn't have any side effects so he when we went his we went back into his office and he the whole back of his wall was like filled with all these like little tinctures yeah and all these like herbal sort of medicines and mixes yeah and um he said okay take this one the gastro drops yeah so he gave that to me and they they didn't taste bad or anything like that no. so i went home and i put like twice a day i put like 12 drops in water mm -hmm. and then just sculled it right and within two i think it might have even been 10 days within 10 days i was completely healed it was outrageous was how quickly. I was completely, like, it was 10 days of taking this tincture stuff. But not only that, it wasn't, like, sudden. It was, like, over that 10 days, it was just getting so much better. Yeah. Better and better and better. And then, like, 10 days later, there was, like, nothing. So we can assume, then, that his frequency zap kick-started your gallbladder into working again. Yeah. Which then filled your stomach well, Allowed my stomach again. to uh, rebuild its right. stomach lining. So it, that was the problem the it's, whole time. That's just insane. Eh? Yeah. So I don't know if I had gone to the doctor and even they had found the cause, which was my gallbladder. Mm. I don't know if they they might have either removed my gallbladder mm. or they might have just done something else. Or who knows? I don't know what they would have done. Because I don't think doctors use bioresonance. No, they don't. Not like, you know, mainstream doctors. No. So this is seen as something that is alternative. Definitely. But I can absolutely 100% attest to the, you know, the efficacy of it. Right. And how... So in your recent episode, it was definitely not as long. So from start to like pretty much... Like you're still... You're... I would not say that you're completely past it yet, would you? No. No, I'm... But I'm I'm definitely, you know... I'm, Heading in the right direction and almost out the other side. Yeah, right? well, well into the right direction. But we were only... I mean, I would say that your next episode was only about six seven weeks long yeah because i think you immediate and so well you immediately close to two months did the protocols that you knew yeah um but i think we were very close to visiting dr zap again yes yeah but Doing you could see right yeah you could see you were heading in the right direction already yes and he doesn't like to just sit you in the machine and zap you for no, anything yeah you have to be showing some real symptoms right and they have to be, you know, reasonably serious. And he and he needs to understand what you're dealing with. Like, I, a friend of mine went to him and he he wouldn't... Oh, my mum. 
went to him and she was like, I wonder what's going on with my body. That's right. She just kind of wanted he's to check down, out. He's turned down quite a few people. Yeah, and he says, her. no, unless you've got some real symptoms, I don't just, do you know, it. yeah, it's not something I do just to check on your body. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you would have gone to see him, eh? That was kind of your next step. Yeah, that was the next step. But thank God yeah. we didn't have to go there. Yeah. Um, and it seems like you are out the other side. Yeah. And we know what, we suspect you had, I don't know if you want to say. Well, so I, th I'm, I think I had like a mild to moderate case of ulcerative colitis. Right. Or some sort of an IBS, Crohn's Some sort of inflammation flavor. flare up yeah. of the colon. Because at one point, I like at, at the worst, mm. when I was away at uh, Boys Camp with Denzel, yeah. um, for that week that I was um, helping out there, uh, I literally felt like the lining of my colon had like like swollen, swollen up so bad, yeah, and that it was just like you know it was almost like a blockage. Right. It was like it felt like an actual blockage in there. Yeah. So that's you can actually get bowel blockages. Yes. I yeah. Know. Yeah. But you just have to be careful. Right. So, but like I said, I we always look to see what direction it goes in. Yeah. So if it's getting worse and worse and worse, then you act you on it. You go to the doctor. You act on it. But yeah. at the same time, I don't want to be someone who runs to the doctor as soon as I feel a headache or as soon as I feel right. a little pain or a burn. And we probably should say you used to be like that. I did. I used to be like that. I used to be like, I, I would you run straight to the doctor. Always at the doctor. Yep. Yeah. Take their medicine. Like if they gave something to me, if they even just like suggested something, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. And go, I went straight to the prescription. Right. Got the prescription and then went Look, home and started taking it. And we still, you know, doctors are amazing people. We still definitely. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, I mean, look, if, if it had got worse and worse, you would have been at the doctor. Yeah. Let's not uh, beat around the bush with that. But yeah. um, I find it fascinating how many um, solutions there are to to health issues yeah. um, that are of the natural. Yeah, I, I like. I highly suggest uh, any viewers who uh, maybe tr who've got some questions regarding health or anything, visit uh, www.drx.com. X is in the X, like the chopping X. -E. Yeah, A X E. Dot com and just just look at Have some articles. Read through. Yeah, yeah, maybe search up what you might be experiencing and just see what he says. I mm -hmm. mean, there's different. There's, he has like thousands of recipes. Yeah. For really healthy food, like he he does this amazing turmeric tea, yeah. which apparently is amazing. Remember we watched that Yes Theory video yeah. just the other day mm -hmm. about the blue zones in the world where people live to well over 100? Yeah, if you guys haven't seen Yes Theory, it's a cool YouTube channel. Yeah, so we watch, sure that with, we watch that with the kids sometimes. Yeah. And anyway, they went to this place in Japan and they did, they farmed all their own food off the land. I mean, they, they all said that they... Most of them were in their nineties, and they said they hadn't even been to the doctor in thirty years. Yeah, and they fascinating. Were, and they were farming. They were farming turmeric. Yeah. and then boiling that, and then having tea. Yeah. So there's all this. There's this. I mean, you. It's not just like um, you know, one culture or one. There's like you know, the Native Americans, the Chinese, um, Indian. You know, Chinese herbs. Yeah, European ancient yeah. medicine. All yeah. the stuff that uses you know all these different techniques of healing, mm -hmm. and obviously using like local stuff that you have. Right. You know, available to you. Um, and there's just these amazing things that you can, like, you can use to heal yourself. I you reckon know? the, kind of the mixture of ancient medicine and modern medicine yep. is like a really happy medium. There. Yeah. You know, like back in the days, if you got a cut and it got infected. You could die, yeah. but nowadays we have antibiotics. Yep. Your life is literally saved by it. That's yeah. an amazing modern medicine. Mm. But we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater with the old stuff. No. You know, and also even just childbirth. Yeah. How many women would die in childhood? Oh, even think about save now? men in war. You even know, like think a about a gunshot wound. Exactly. You know, now now they can save your life on Surgery, the field. Surgery, like you know, the medics in the field now exactly. they can they can perform stuff on you and, and save your life. Yeah. But back in the day, like you know, Civil War days or yeah. all the old wars. I mean, if you got even like a little bit of a wound. Yeah, was, you were done. Yeah, it's pretty much. Or they died of like infection and stuff. Um, just the like common cold. Yeah. Like the flu. Yep. Yeah. And nowadays we've got all this, you know, modern medicine that's so helpful. Yeah. But I feel like we can't lose touch with the ancient no. medicines that are also so great for pre preventative. Yeah. Really. I, I think they are both equally as important. Yeah, and they work well together. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they do. So I think, yeah, like I said, I think you in your own household you can have, you know, a lot of stuff that can really help a whole range of health issues. Yeah. But then it crosses a certain threshold when then you, you do need professional help definitely yeah you do need to go and see somebody that can you know there's yeah 
because the human body is probably the most, the, and the, including the mind, right. is probably the most complicated thing in the whole universe. Oh, 100%. It's just amazing, like, you know, but also amazing how the body heals itself. Yes. Where it's like, you know, like all the super, superheroes that, you know, yeah. the kids love, you know, and they have like those super fast healing powers. Yeah, they do. It's like, we've got that. I know. Oh, but on like a slower, slower, slower level. But it's still fascinating. It's still amazing. Gut stuff is Gut hard Gut stuff to heal. for Sam. <laughs> so basically... We were questioning for a while there, if you don't get well, what are we going to do with our trip? Yeah. Or, or if this is really bad. That's like, another thing, yeah. Your mind went to some pretty dark places. Yeah. Really, think. really dark places. Because like places. I said earlier in the podcast, I always go to the worst case scenarios. Right. So I'm thinking that death might be around the corner. Right. You know. And it was extremely scary to watch you go through that and not be freaked out myself. Yeah. Um, but, but in saying that, you were such like a rock for me. You were like... I was trying to not, I was trying to be like, Sam, you're going to be fine. Yeah. You know, we know you've done it before. You can, you know, you and were, you were yeah. just freaking out. Oh, you were it was just, you were like, I remember being away at boys camp Yeah. and my phone would be sitting in my car, which is like probably the only place in the whole camp where I could get reception. Yeah. And I remember like every day I would make sure there was like two times in the day where I'd walk back over to my car and just see if I had any messages from you. And, yeah. and if not, I'd just quickly drop you a text. And mm. then you would just like give me these words of like reassurance and I'd, yeah. just, I'd feel so much better. Yeah. Like it would literally just carry me through the rest of the day. you got to be a team with these things, eh? Yeah. yeah. Like I, what I've always found is when one of us is weak, the other one is strong. Yeah. You just naturally have to step up. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so some really deep waters that you've been through in the last two months. Yes. And we did wonder if we could do the trip like everything was up in the air yeah um and it wasn't up in the air for long because it became quite apparent that you were go you were getting better yeah um so we knew you know hopefully you were coming out of it well that was another point of anxiety was like you know is this going to carry through can we go away yeah can we still travel to america if i'm still suffering like this you know we wouldn't be able to go try the restaurants that we want to try the fast All foods the that we want to try even just the fact that you know you carry us on this channel like it's you and yeah. you know you're the one vlogging and organizing. I mean, you've done all the organizing for the trip. Yeah. If you weren't on your A game, how could we keep going? Uh, it would have been I, a disaster. I, I've never traveled before. I mean, we all know this. Yeah. I've never been, I wouldn't know how to do it. Like, yeah. I, you need to be on leading this. Yeah. Um. So we were like far out. All, all the snack food has to go. Yeah. I mean, we're not snacking yeah, yeah. anything at the moment no, um, no. i mean even airplane food would have freaked me out totally you know you don't know what you're gonna get well yeah so, so yeah it was just it was a big question mark it was a big question mark everything came to a halt and it was like what's going to happen but thankfully i mean because the other thing is we were drawing on from the from the gastritis taking seven to eight months to heal yes i know so and I was we like, were how sort long of is this journey going to take right project yeah. and we were like this is the worst timing i, I cannot believe this has happened yeah and remember I said to you, I was like, oh my gosh, I just want my life back. Yeah. Everything went on hold. Yeah. I know. All I can think about was like, because, you know, here's the thing is that, you know, since the gastritis thing, it's always food. Like since I had my digestive things, it's food that gets taken off me first. Yeah. So I have to do the fasting and the bone yeah. broth. And, you know, every time I eat, there's discomfort and, mm. you know, the... That, and But food is like such a big part of life. Yeah, like and I, we love food. Yeah, all I could think about was like, am I ever going to go to like, be able to go to a restaurant with you again? I know. Am I ever going to be able to go to a cafe with you and the kids? Mm. And, you know, it's just like, it's not just the eating, it's like the act of partaking right. with others. In the activity. Know, and like breaking bread with others and, yeah. and stuff like that. But in saying that, I think that one thing that I always try and do with the health uh, stuff is because I know that everything happens for a reason. Right. That's one thing. That gives me great comfort in all of this is that health, like no matter what happens, whether it's financial or health or anything, mm. it always happens for a reason. Right. And I know that God's got my back. Totally. You know? And so it's his perfect plan. Right. That's working out in our lives. Yeah. And that's just something that I had to learn to completely surrender because, yeah. you know, I was I was a bit of a hypochondriac, right? Back in the day you were. Pretty bad. Like, even now, even like, or even not, not now, not since this latest one, but even like, you know, I always used to like, okay, see this mark on my arm? Mm. I thought it was skin cancer, but it, it was like this little sort of growth on my arm, right? Yeah. I went and got it checked by a skin specialist. They said nothing, it's nothing, fine. nothing wrong with it. It's just a normal little like mole or like a wart type thing. Mm. And it still wasn't good enough for me. So I went up to the hardware store, bought a soldering iron, came back home and burnt through all seven layers of my skin. 
and yeah. it, it's now it's turned into a big scar because that's how much I was obsessing over my my health. And you know what, Sam, we haven't even gone into your mental health. Yes, yeah. So uh, there was a few episodes of breakdowns. Yeah. Um, that we haven't even touched on, and that was Anxiety. in the early days. Yeah. Um, and that's when you did struggle with the hypochondriac. Yes. Yeah. Stuff. So like everything that I would feel was, and this is kind of it, this is very recent. This is only just this year. Yeah. Earlier this year. Yeah. So I still have lasting effects, but yeah. not not now, because that, like I said, with the latest health thing, and it's like a it's like a little work that's been done in my life every mm. time that I've gone through something like this. Yeah. Because it's just God saying, just trust me. Yeah. Just surrender. Just surrender your health, yeah. surrender everything to me, and I'll look after you. The thing is that, you know, over the last three years, I think there's been so much fear poured yes. out. Yeah, the spirit of fear, yeah. On us. Yeah. Um, everywhere we turned in the last three years was... Being pushed um, through the media and everything. Doom and gloom and bad news. Just yeah. bad news. I, yeah. did, I think that if you came away from the last three years without feeling fearful, then yeah. you're probably in the very few. Yeah. I mean... In some form or, or other, we've all experienced the fear. And I think that's had a huge impact on our mental health. Yeah. The way that we handle situations now. Um, Not just individually, but just like as a society. Right. The mental health. Yeah. It's been collective. massive. Mm. Um, and I think, you know, even some of the comments that we get on our YouTube videos about, you know, our content being something that lifts people. Yeah, you and know, helps them through. As we have time. fun, you know, and it's been genuinely very fun. Yeah. We have a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and it's actually been something that's helped us a lot. Yeah, it has. Um, I mean, one of the main reasons that, you know, to start the channel, we did it for some independence. But then as we saw the response from the NZers mm. and their comments and everything like that, it soon became, we're actually doing this to, like, help people. Right. In this, like, indirect way. Yeah, and we didn't even know that it would have that effect. Yeah. I know, so, it was crazy. That's it was crazy. like, I, I was, some of the stuff that they were saying was like, you know, I mean, I saw a few comments that have said, you know, I was thinking about like ending it all and stuff like that. And yeah. And e emails that we get yeah. um, about people having to deal with grief and family members passing them away. I mean, we've been through that too. Yeah. Um, so it's cool. It's cool that we get to serve in that way. Yeah. And a lot of people who can't have families for various reasons. Yeah. You know, or don't have a family and they, they find that they... Uh, Feel like part of ours. Yeah. Which is cool. And they've got something that they've been missing. Yeah. So that's, that's, a, that's a huge blessing for us. Huge. Yeah. I think um, we can pretty much wrap this up by saying we are still coming to America. Yes. <laughs> so we are traveling to America and as uh, as for the boxes, I think we will start slowly getting back into them. Yeah. Very slowly, but I kind of want to I just want there to be a buffer zone from where I'm I feel like I'm fully healed. Right. And then when we start the boxes, I don't want to just get straight into it. Also, the other thing is with. we want to allow there to be time like you say for you to heal um, and then thoroughly enjoy our food on the trip yeah because we love food yeah we do we're <laughs> we foodies. love food we're foodies and we love documenting the journey too we love showing oh, you guys our reaction to all the trying food. things for the first time yeah. like experimenting like it's just our jam i know yeah no pun intended. that's gonna be awesome so we look forward to seeing you guys in america later this year definitely and thank you for tuning in to the first episode of your new zealand family podcast do you know what's funny is that we were wondering if we could get to an hour of talking yeah, I, t I, I told you it was going to be easy. Yeah, I was like, I don't know if I can get you to talk for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been easy. So what is that? We're at one minute, uh, one hour, eight minutes. Yeah. Pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. So uh, should we discuss what we've got coming up on the podcast? Yeah, so uh, there is, well, there's a lot of stories from our lives like we do have a lot of stories and we'd love to share them some pretty crazy stories some crazy right? stories so you do you have to stick around and hear them because they're yeah they are insane um we could there's one talking about the real reason we started youtube yep and yeah my professional life and everything maybe yep. the history of all the jobs that i've had and we've never really gone into the actual reason and how we ended up in youtube yeah um there's we want to start reading some of the letters that you guys have sent us yeah, as well. So, yeah, we want to start opening up fan mail on the podcast. Because right. it's, it's long format, you know, you can't, you don't have to sort of yeah. chop everything up. And... So we have quite a lot of letters that are sent to us. They're all in a box. Yeah. And we want to be able to open them and read them. Yeah. Um, and we also want to invite you to send us any crazy stories of your own that we'll read out 
could be quite a fun time. Yeah, if you've got some crazy stories and send them in. Yeah. And so, something that would be, you know, like really interesting for all the... Like a super intriguing, interesting, to, like Mr. Ballin style. Yeah, like, or, yeah, whatever. Yeah, l- just some stories. crazy, maybe like old war stories from your granddad or your, your dad or something. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah, because I've got a few of them myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, so, but yeah. really, we don't really know where the podcast is going to go. No, I mean, well, we do. I mean, we have a bit of a plan. We have a bit of a plan, but in terms of guests, uh, um, yes, we yes. are at the bottom of the world. <laughs> like, not only are we in the bottom of the world, we're like three hours away from the nearest major city. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so it's yeah, it's a bit of a challenge, but we will try and line something up for you guys. To, Definitely to try and bring somebody interesting and have a chat with them. Yeah, because I, I think how, um, that would be really fun. Yeah everybody's got a story everyone has a story everyone has got a story and we would like to yeah we'd like to explore your stories as well yeah so i guess we can wrap it up yeah and uh that's episode one done and dusted let us know what you think in the comments yeah please we do yeah please let (laughs) us us know (laughs) we need all the help yeah um all the pointers yeah but uh, again suggestions a huge appreciation to the people who have stuck around to the end if you are here and you're watching this podcast or listening to it and you've followed us over from our channel. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much for your support. You guys are the first. You're <laughs> literally. You guys are the foundation of this channel. The founda- founding members. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like it's just, it's epic. It's really exciting. Yeah. I, I, like I said to you yesterday, I was like, I'm actually really excited to just build another channel. Do you know what's funny though, is that I wanted to start the podcast first because I just wanted to talk with you. <laughs> <laughs> And you were like, ah, oh. yeah. and then you got really excited and set the whole thing up. Yep. So, so yeah, a bit of an investment buying all the gear, but hundred percent. But again, yeah, hopefully so worth it. Yeah, and also a huge thank you to all of the people who are over on Patreon because yeah. you guys are amazing and your help, you know, allows us to do stuff like this. And we hope that because uh, you guys seem like the ones who truly care about us, you yeah, know, not just us reacting to other things and yeah, and making these short videos, even though that's how you know the reason that you guys uh, started following us. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think this this long format now is almost like a little bit more of a uh you know like a a, a a gift back to you guys yeah you know these, yeah because it's more in depth about us it's just our lives yeah and it's probably what people like you want to know more about just a bunch of yarns because so yeah, ask support. ask questions in the comments yes give us suggestions what yeah. you want us to chat about and we can probably take some of those questions into the next podcast and totally answer them and talk about them yeah yeah so anyway guys if you like that one make sure you smash the like button <laughs> and also subscribe because we don't have many. Uh, no. <laughs> if any. <laughs> if any. And also, we're, are we available on every platform? I think I'm going to try and sort it out so that we're available on Spotify and YouTube and maybe... Is it Apple Play? Maybe. Apple? Or is it Google Play? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I need to do some research. We'll sort it. I, I definitely know it's Spotify and YouTube. Yeah. So I'll try and sort it out there. I'll, I think Spotify is good because, you know, you can listen to it in, like, cars and stuff. Exactly. When you're driving. Or if you're like me while you're cooking dinner. Yeah, you chuck a, you chuck just, a podcast on. Yeah. I, I actually put on YouTube and just let it play. Yeah. And then just listen. But, yeah. yeah. Anyway, guys, I think that's it for our first podcast. Done. It's been a, a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I guess we'll see you in episode two. All right. See you guys. Bye. Bye.